Hello friends and families from Clark Wilkins. Welcome to the 2021 story time. Grab your stuffy, your jammies, and a comfy sweater. Grab your parents, sit down, and get ready to be thoroughly entertained by our staff for this year's story time. It's great to see you. Mrs. Murphy here with my friends, Ms. Devine and Ms. Peril. And we cannot wait to read to you a funny story called Santa's Underwear and also for Ms. Peril to share some of her famous Peril's puns and jokes. So to kick us off, here is this story, Santa's Underwear. I have a feeling it's gonna be a funny one. It was Christmas Eve and time to get ready. Santa shined his belt buckle and polished his best black boots. He ate a healthy dinner to give him energy for the busy night ahead. As Santa munched on his whole wheat bread, visions of delicious sweets danced in his head. Tonight, children would leave tasty treats by their Christmas trees just for him. He brushed his teeth, then scrub-a-dub dubbed in the tub. After blow-drying his hair, Santa combed his silky beard until it shined like new fallen snow. Wrapped in his favorite robe, he admired how jolly he looked in the mirror. The hour had come to put on his special Christmas clothes. Santa pulled open the underwear drawer in his dresser. He poked around. Where were his long red woolly undies? Mm. Even though they were old and faded and saggy, he always wore them under his suit on this special night. They kept him warm as his sleigh soared across Starry, wintry skies. I wonder what's going to happen next. Ooh, what do you think? Yeah. Um, Let's see what happens. Okay. Santa looked through the rest of the drawers, checked the dirty clothes hamper, and peeked under the bed. Ooh. But all he found there was one white sock, a dusty rubber reindeer toy, and two sticky candy canes. No red undies. Santa sighed. It's getting interesting. Who do you know? I guess this year I'll just have to wear something else. He tried on the pink boxers and t-shirt Mrs. Claus had given him his last Valentine's Day. Too many hearts and cutesy cupids, he said. Then he buttoned up the green long johns he wore every St. Patrick's Day. These shamrocks aren't Christmassy <laughs> at all. Yeah, little who has a pair of those. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. yeah. His Easter briefs, covered in pictures <laughs> of dancing <laughs> jelly beans, made Santa ask, what was I thinking? The tidy whities and undershirt he brought out for Thanksgiving were now a little too tidy and uncomfortable. Well, he did eat a lot of pumpkin pie that day. Yeah, yeah it looks like it. His boring, regular underwear just wasn't right for tonight. What was he to do? Wear no underwear at all on Christmas Eve? <laughs> that would certainly make him shiver and quiver out in the cold. Burr. Would you like to finish it off? Sure. Santa oh. threw up his hands in despair. The clock was tick-tocking. Children all over the world were expecting their presents. There was no time to waste. He would just have to wear these, those silly shamrock long johns. At least they were green and warm. Yeah. Santa sighed as he opened the closet door to get his Santa suits. And there, on a hanger, right in front of him, tied with a bow, were brand new Christmas undies. They were just like his old ones, but not saggy. <laughs> Their color was almost as bright as Rudolph's nose. Oh, good one. A card tied to the front read, Dear Santa, use this woolly gift tonight. Last Christmas, we couldn't help but notice that you really needed some new undies. <laughs> Warm wishes, Rudolph and the reindeer crew. Decked out in holiday red, Santa admired how twinkly, admired how twinkly his eyes looked in the mirror. He finished dressing, flopped on his hat, and raced out the door. He looks pretty happy yeah, now, right? He looks like that, yeah. As Santa hopped onto his sleigh and rose out of sight, you could hear him exclaim, exclaim, thank you, Rudolph, Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, and Vixen, thanks to Comet, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen. Now let's get this show on the road. We've got a lot to do. Merry Christmas to you. Wow, what a great, great story. Ooh. That was a funny one. I think Santa was able to find
find a nice solution to what's wow, happening there too. So, Ms. Perles, you have some jokes for Wait, us? Wait, I'll let you hold yeah. my, my Sebastian lookalike. <laughs> and um, Mrs. Murphy, if you could hold little hoof again, let's warm up by the fire. <laughs> I'm not, I have some of uh, Perils' favorite Christmas puns, and Woo! here we go. Woo! All right. These are some good ones I've been saving. I've been writing my own notes. Let's see what we have. Okay. okay. What do reindeers say? before they tell you a joke. Uh, what? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> this one's gonna slay you. <laughs> Get it? Get it. All right, all right, next up. What do you call an old snowman? What? What? Water. Oh, <laughs> come on. All right, let's see what else we have here. Okay, what do gingerbread men use when they break their legs? Ooh, I don't know, what? Candy cane! Oh! Yeah, good one. All right, so I've got a few more. Okay, I'm excited. All right. Um, what did one snowman say to the other snowman? What? I don't know why. <laughs> Do you smell carrots? Oh! <laughs> Get it? All right, let's see what else I have. Um, oh. How does the snow globe feel this year? I, I don't know how. A little shaken. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, I have two more. All right. What do you sing at a snowman's birthday party? Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think? I, I, I don't, don't know. know. Freeze a jolly good fellow. Freeze a jolly. Okay. Okay. All right. Last one. This this is a principal holiday joke. Okay. Which. Reindeer always gets sent to the principal's office. Ooh, which one? Rude. Oh, oh that's you a guys, good one. this has been so much fun. We are glad that you were able to join us tonight. I hope everybody has a great holiday. Uh, and again, um, enjoy all your time with family and friends. Thank you for joining us tonight. Bye, Bye. guys. Hey, Mr. Hull. What's up, Mr. Hull? Hey, you want to sing uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? It looks like you're ready for it. I am ready, I think. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. All right, let's sing Rudolph. There's a lot of reindeer to remember. You got it, though. All, All right. right, let's do you it. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer? Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose and if you ever saw it you would even say it glows all of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names they never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games then one foggy Christmas Santa came to say, Ho, ho, ho! Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him, as they shouted out with glee, it be a Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. You go down in his story. All right, maybe we'll see nice. Rudolph. Yes, maybe. He'll recognize us. Good evening, boys and girls, and welcome to the holiday story time. My name is Mrs. Lyon, and I have the classic book, Twas the Night Before Christmas, originally known as A Visit from St. Nicholas. And we know this as a story, but it's actually a poem. Let me share it with you. The Night Before Christmas by Clement C. Moore. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds 
while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, threw open the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to obstacles below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and a tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he flew and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer, now Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner, on Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew with sleighs full of toys in St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkle, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. And I drew in my head and was man turning around down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back and he looked like a peddler opening his pack. His eyes how they twinkled, his dimples how merry, his cheek were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth drawn up like a bow and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his beard soon gave me to know I had nothing to fear. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled the stockings and turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose, gave a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. I enjoyed sharing this classic with you that I read to my children when they were young. And this is from the Clark Library and I imagine it may be found in the Wilkins Library. Happy holidays to everyone. Merry Christmas. Hey, Mr. Holt. How's it going, Mr. Allward? Good. Uh, well, not so good. Not so good? Well, uh, I haven't been behaving very well lately. Well, you do have a history. I could be in trouble. Um, hey, you know, because somebody's coming to town soon. Someone's coming around? Who might that be? Do they know? I think they know, but have you been, you know, naughty or nice? I mean... We keep leaving you wherever we go as when a team. When we're the specialists, I know you guys are leaving all the time. But we're just having, it's a joke. It's a joke. We're having fun. You know all we right. care about you. Okay. I'm telling you this though, Mr. Holt. You better watch out. You better not cry. 
You better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Well, he's making a list, he's checking it twice. He's gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. You know what? He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows if you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming. pretty nice. I think maybe we made up for anything that we were naughty about with maybe he'll say we're okay. That was a good harmony too. Nice work. All right. Hope you guys have been good. Stay out. Hi. Oh, some of you only know me like that. But welcome. My name's Gail Polio and I uh, welcome you to the holiday story time and I've selected a nice story from one of my favorite local authors Marianne Coco Leffler and she uh, has many stories the one I've picked tonight is a homemade together Christmas Luca was helping decorate for Christmas Luca's sister Rosie held up a star she made last year out of twigs and moss. The homemade ornaments are my favorite, said Mama. They always make things made by hand are always the most special, said Dad. Why don't we make each other's gifts this year, suggested Rosie. We'll have a homemade Christmas, said Mama. What does that mean? asked Luca. We're going to make our gifts instead of buy them, explained Rosie. I already have an idea. And she ran upstairs to her room. What can I make? asked Luca. You'll think of something, said Dad. Luca went to his room and wrote some ideas in his notebook. Bake a cake. No, I can't use the oven by myself. Plant a garden. That won't work. It's not spring. Make a warm hat. But I don't know how to knit. He looked over his notes. Luca needed some new ideas. He followed a sweet smell to the kitchen. What are you doing? Luca asked Mom. I'm making something for our homemade gift, said Mama. What is it? asked Luca. You'll find out on Christmas morning, said Mama. What can I make? How about making something with origami, suggested Mama. Luca wrote in his notepad. Oh, here it is. Make paper bird. Hmm. Luca tried his origami bird idea, but he could not get the folding just right. All that was left were mounds of paper, so Luca wrote down some new ideas. The next day, Luca listened at the door to Dad's workshop. Mm -hmm. He could hear a machine humming. Dad, what are you doing in there? yelled Luca. Don't come in. I'm working on my gift, called Dad. What is it? Luca asked. You'll see on Christmas morning, said Dad. What can I make? How about making something to eat, suggested Luca. Luca wrote in his notepad, make honey granola. Mm. Luca tried his honey granola idea, but Luca loved honey more than anything. All that was left was a big empty jar and a giant bellyache. Ooh. 
Luca heard music coming from Rosie's room. He banged on the wall. Rosie, what are you doing in there? He yelled. I'm working on my gift, said Rosie. What is it? Luca asked. You'll find out on Christmas morning, Rosie said. What can I make? How about building something out of snow, suggested Rosie. Luca wrote in his notepad. Oh, it doesn't say what he wrote. Here, build a snow bear. Luca tried his snow bear idea, but the sun got a little too warm for a snow bear. All that was left was a long, wet scarf. On Christmas Eve, everyone was busy putting the finishing touches on their gifts. Luca was worried he still did not have an idea for his Christmas gift. Mama peeked into Luca's room. Mama, I have no gift to give, said Luca. You know, Luca, said Mama gently, the best part of Christmas is spending time together. There is no better gift. She gave Luca a big hug and a kiss goodnight. Luca thought about what Mama had said. He looked around his room at the red scarf, the empty jar, and the mound of paper. Finally, he got an idea. He jumped out of bed and went right to work. Luca was so excited that he woke everyone up before sunrise. Merry Christmas! He proudly presented his homemade gift. In this jar are 365 days of together to-dos. We start today. Luca turned to Rosie. Pick one. Rosie dug her hand deep inside the jar and pulled out their very first together to-do. Watch the sunrise from the porch. Nice. It's going to be cold. That's perfect, Mama said, and held up her homemade gift. We can have breakfast on the porch. Oh my gosh, it's like a Christmas tree painting. That's perfect, said Dad, pulling out his homemade gift. Oh, a nice quilt. We'll need this. Let's go, said Rosie. I can give everyone my gift outside. Oh, look, there they are, all snuggled up, huh? Together they ate the delicious homemade Christmas tree pancake. Together they snuggled on the homemade blanket for four. Together they listened to Rosie sing her homemade Christmas song. And together they watched the sun peek over the mountain slowly lighting up the field. Merry homemade Christmas, said Mom, Mama, and a happy together year, said Luca. Oh, how nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, boys and girls. So I hope you have a nice holiday break when it comes up, and we'll see you back after that, and it will be a new year. Hi, boys and girls, uh, Mrs. Polio here, and I wanted to read um, a holiday story to you about Hanukkah. And the one I've chosen is Hanukkah, O oh Hanukkah by Susan L. Roth. Hanukkah, O oh Hanukkah. Come light the menorah. Let's have a party. Let's all dance the hora. Gather round the table. We'll give you a treat. Dreidels to play with. Latkes to eat. And while we are playing, the candles are burning low. One for each night, they shed a sweet light. 
to remind us of days long ago. One for each night, they shed a sweet light to remind us of days long ago. There's the song. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you have a happy holiday. Hey, Mr. Holmes. Hey, Mr. Allward. Hey, do you want to sing the dreidel song with me? Yeah, can you lead me? I'll try. All right, let's go. Oh, dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. And when it's dry and ready, oh, dreidel, I shall play. Oh, dreidel, 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 oh, dreidel, I shall play. Oh, dreidel, 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 oh, dreidel, I shall play. Oh, dreidel, 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 with legs so short and thin. Oh, dreidel, 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 you drop then I shall win. Oh, dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. Oh, dreidel, 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 oh, dreidel, I shall play. Oh, dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. Oh, dreidel, 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 oh, dreidel, I shall play. Hey, that was fun. It's a good beat. Yeah. It was fast. You did good. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mrs. Strauss, and I'm a librarian at Wilkins School. Tonight, I will be reading one of my favorite Christmas books, which is Mr. Willoughby's Christmas Tree by Robert Berry. So let's begin. Mr. Willoughby's Christmas Tree came by special delivery. Full and fresh and glistening green, the biggest tree he had ever seen. He dashed downstairs to open the door. This was the moment he'd waited for. A magnificent tree, splendid, he cried. Please, sir, won't you carry it right inside? I think it might look best this year, right in the parlor corner here. But once the tree stood in its place, Mr. Willoughby made a terrible face. The tree touched the ceiling and then bent like a bow. Oh, good heavens, he gasped. Something must go. Baxter, the butler, was called on in haste to chop off the top, though it seemed quite a waste. That's great, Mr. Willoughby cried with glee. Now we can start trimming the tree. When the trimming was well underway, the top was placed on a silver tray. Baxter said, I know just who would be delighted with this Christmas tree. So it was presented to Miss Adelaide, Mr. Willoughby's upstairs maid. Won't this tree be a pretty sight when I have trimmed it later tonight? But the top, oh dear, I'm so afraid will have to be cut sighed Miss Adelaide, and so with scissors sharp and long, she snipped off the top while she hummed a song. The top was set out the very next day and back of the house to be thrown away. That little tree top caught the eye of Tim the gardener passing by. He certainly was not about to see that little tree thrown out. He hurried home straight away to see what Mrs. Tim would say. Fa la la, surprise, surprise. His wife could not believe her eyes. But our house, she said, is so snug and small. I do not believe we need it all. And before Tim had a chance to shout, she cut off the top and threw it out. Barnaby Bear was padding by. It almost hit him in the eye. Now who would throw a tree away so very close to Christmas Day? I'll take it home. That's what I'll do. Look, Mama Bear, I have a present for you. Isn't it a pretty tree? Yawned Barnaby quite drowsily. The little bear standing off far cried out, that tree won't hold a star. Barnaby said, let's cut a hunk off of the bottom here at the trunk. But Mama Bear just shook her head and sliced the treetop off instead. Jolly by golly, Barnaby said with a kick. 
Mama, that surely is just the right trick. Let's trim it with bells and honey rings, some berries and tinsel and popcorn on strings. Mama said, trim it just as you like. I've got to tidy up for the night. This top we won't need anymore. I'll put it just outside the door. Later on that frosty night, Frisky Fox came into sight. He spied the treetop, rubbed his chin, opened his sack, and stuffed the top in. He scampered home and jumped his gate. This Christmas present couldn't wait. It's even better than mincemeat pie, said Mrs. Fox with a happy sigh. Then the foxes saw that their Christmas prize was just a wee bit oversized. Here, my dears, don't you worry. I'll fix this top now in a hurry. Benjamin Rabbit found it then, just outside the fox's den. It seems, he thought, most certainly, Santa left that for my family. Look, he cried, see the tree I found? With that, he called his family round. Then there was a merry-making, rollicking, frolicking, carrot-shaking celebration around the tree. All were as happy as rabbits could be. Benjamin Rabbit, with his own hand, sliced a carrot and made a stand. Now let's see how this will look in our little chimney nook. But right away the children cried, look, it's leaning off to one side. It's too tall, that's all, said Mrs. Rabbit. And as though it were a summer carrot, she gave it a chop and threw away the top. Then Mistletoe Mouse just happened to see that tiny tip of a Christmas tree. He pulled it through the snow and ice, up some stairs, he fell down twice, and at last he reached his cozy house. It's just the right size, said Mrs. Mouse. Then at the top, if you please, they put a star made out of cheese. Oh, wasn't it grand to have a tree exactly like Mr. Willoughby's? The end. I hope you enjoyed that story. And I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. Have a great night. Bye. story time. My name is Miss Anderson and I'm going to be reading you the book The Wild Christmas Reindeer by Jan Brett. Tika was excited and a little afraid. This year Santa had asked her to get the reindeer ready to fly on Christmas Eve. Tika had never done this before and she wanted everything to be perfect. Tika lived up in the Arctic in the shadow of Santa's winter farm. The last of the snow geese had flown south, and everyone's mind was on Christmas. The workshop was alive with the sounds of saws sawing, hammers hammering, and brushes painting, as they all worked to have the toys and presents ready for delivery on Christmas Eve. Tika knew it was time for her to go in search of the reindeer. They had been out on the tundra, wild and free since last Christmas. 
and Tika was sure they wouldn't want to go back to Winter Farm to train. She would have to be strong and firm. At last she found them. Bramble and Heather, Windswept and Lichen, Snowball, Crag, Twilight, and Tundra. Tika took a deep breath and shouted out, Let's go! Move! 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 The reindeer were bewildered by Tika's voice. Their heads went up to see who this loud creature was. But they let her herd them together and headed back towards Winter Farm. Tundra gave her the most trouble. Tika didn't know that he considered himself the leader and was not used to being bossed around. He liked to stay next to Twilight, but she was separated from him and running near the front. When they got to the barn, Tika put them in different stalls. Tundra snorted impatiently. By the next morning, when Tika went into the barn, all the reindeer were restless and upset. Lycan was frightened of Crag, who kept nipping at him. Bramble was so worried, she drove Heather wild, and Twilight kept calling out to Tundra, who was just plain angry and stamping his hooves. Tika groomed each reindeer. She wanted them to look sleek and glossy for Santa. One by one, she brushed and combed their coats and pushed and pulled at their tangled manes. She brushed so long and hard that their ears started to turn pink. Tika took the reindeer outside. Now she was ready for the real training to begin. Snowflakes danced in the air as she tried to stand them in two lines and put on their harnesses, but they wouldn't stay lined up. She had put Tundra at the back with Heather instead of at the front with Twilight, so he kicked out at Heather, who then bolted into Bramble. Tika scolded the reindeer. Don't move, she cried, but they all ran off wild-eyed and she had to go after them and bring them back. The next day, Tika harnessed the reindeer in the barn before taking them out into the snow. Everything went right until she got them lined up outside and tried to steer them first to the left and then to the right. To make the sleigh fly, they would need to pull together smoothly, but everything went wrong. Tundra crashed into Heather, Snowball blew up at Bramble, Windswept knocked over Twilight, and then Lycan locked antlers with Crag. Stop, Tika cried as she watched the reindeer paw the air. Unhook, she shouted as they tried to free their long antlers. Then Lycan and Crag fell over into the snow. The harder they pulled, the more their antlers locked. The reindeer were frantic and Tika only made it worse by yelling at them. Tundra and Heather rushed to help, but the antlers did not break free Windswept nudged at Lycan and Bramble ran to help Crag. But the more they tried to help, the more they got tangled up themselves. Their necks strained and their muscles bulged, but their antlers did not budge. Tika wailed, Oh please, it's almost Christmas Eve! But the reindeer could not move. A frosty silence hung in the air. Tika looked at the tangled reindeer. Once so bold and free, and began to cry. It's my fault, she said. I spent all my time yelling at you instead of helping. I'm sorry. And one by one, she gave each reindeer a hug. Tomorrow, she said, we'll go to work in a new way. No yelling, no screaming, and no bossing. I promise. Let me try to help you get free. The reindeer listened to this new voice. Heather's eyes sparkled. Crag cracked a reindeer grin. Bramble giggled and Snowball sighed. Tundra laughed and Twilight smiled. The more they laughed, the more they shook. And as they shook, their antlers rattled and rubbed. And before Tika could do anything, she heard a spring, spring, sprang sound. And it was the antlers jiggling free. Quietly, Tika led the reindeer back to the barn. She sleeked their coats. She gently brushed their ears and combed out their manes. Tundra nuzzled her cheek. The next day, the reindeer lined up in two lines, ready for the harness, with Twilight and Tundra leading the line. They practiced turning left and they practiced turning right. Tika directed them softly. Tundra pulled for Twilight. Bramble was gentle to Lycan. Windswept helped Heather and Snowball nestled against Crag. 
Together, they practiced long and hard. They didn't notice that it was getting dark, and they almost didn't hear a jingle in the distance. It was Santa standing by the sleigh, piled high with presents and ready to go. Now the reindeer were ready too, and Tika led them to the sleigh. Santa smiled and nodded his thanks. Then he climbed aboard and waved to Tika, who watched as the wild reindeer rose up together and carried the sleigh off into the night. I hope you enjoyed the story, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday break. Hey, Mr. Alt. Hey, Mr. Alt Warden. Hey, uh, do you know a little Spanish? A little Espanol, un Ah, si. Let's give it a try. Let's Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Los poseros años en felicidad How about again? Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Los poseros años en felicidad I wanna wish you I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas I wanna wish you a Merry Bottom of my heart. Awesome. Nice job, Mr. Holt. Yeah, you too. Feliz Navidad. Hey, Merry Christmas.